We're live. What up, everyone? This is Dolce. Oh, she's so awesome. This is my third time grilling Dolce, and I think maybe my fourth time. But I remember the first time, it was such a, such a challenge getting her all combed out. But I got most of her combed out now, so working this comb thoroughly through the coat like that. Okay, okay. Especially the back legs here, the legs. Used to be such a challenge. I mean, she used to try to jump off the table. You know, just really, she was like, not really understanding why, you know, this was happening. But now that this is like my fourth time grooming her, she's see, much more cooperative. <clears throat> I've already brushed out most of her now. I just have this one leg left. But I figured I'll show you the, the process because even though I've got her all brushed out once, like combed out actually, see it's still catching a lot of dead hair. So, see around here as well. You can feel it actually, you can feel the, the texture. It's like rough. So, even the tail here. So, so see all this? I just got out. This is all dead undercoat, dead hairs. And like I said, I still have this one leg left, this front leg, but check this out. Look at all of this that I combed out. Look at this. So the reason why it's so important to comb all of this out is because when this is all still in the coat, it causes tangles. It makes the coat feel rough, not soft and silky and clean. And it's gonna be really difficult to dry her with all of this in here because this dead hair holds on to the moisture and all the you know bacteria and all that stuff that makes it smell bad. So this is gonna be what holds on to all the moisture. So it'll, t it'll take longer for her to dry. Even when she is dry, she's still gonna smell a little bit. And after the groom today, she's gonna to tangle up again if this is still in the coat. So I'm gonna show you how I brush out the legs. So first, I use a slicker brush. Oh, and you know what really helps is to give them some treats. You know, I, I use a heart, beef heart treats. So I give them some treats, you know, in between, give them a little break. She, I let her down, give her a little break. There you go, girl. <laughs> give her some treats, you know, make it a good experience. So it's not so bad, right? So then, I'm using a slicker brush. I'm gonna start from the bottom here. Just kind of break up the coat because if I start with the comb it's going to pull too much and make it too difficult for her there we go so go through with the slicker brush and again she's not going to really enjoy it she doesn't really like it but now at least she tolerates it and she knows what it's for you know like the first two times I groomed her it really was a challenge just to keep her on the table she was trying to jump off but that's why it's important to build that trust with the dogs as well. You know, have a good relationship with them. And the way I hold her like even, you know, I wanna hold it firm to let her know that I need her. But when she wants to pull away, I just let her pull, I just let her pull it out. That way, you know, she ha always has that obvious way of escape. That way she doesn't feel trapped. Good girl. There you go. You're all right. And you can use her. There you go, Dolce. Good girl. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> She's like licking my ear. Okay, so now that I got her hair kind of brushed out, right? So it's kind of separated now. It's not all tangled up into little bundles. Got all those bundles broken up. So, didn't get that much, but you know, enough to where it helps break up that coat, right? Now, I'm gonna go through with my middle comb and comb through it. There we go. Good 
Good girl. There you go. You're okay. You're okay, Dolce. Good girl. See, this side still has some. There you go. And especially because I'm going to um, shave the feet, do the poodle feet, I want to make sure, you know, that the skin is clear, you know, I, I want to make sure I get a lot of that dead hair out of the pores before I shave. There we go. She's actually tall enough where she, her feet was on the ground. Man, goodness, but still, I know that doesn't look good. <laughs> oh, man, so she fell off the back. Um, but, you know, she's fine. <laughs> man, are you going to throw some cowboy magic on that coat? Oh, no, I don't. Equis? Uh, what's up, Terry? How are you? So, yeah, <laughs> that was embarrassing. Um, but, yeah, just light, you know, light mist on the coat and then go through and you're okay, you're okay. There we go. Yeah, I mean, the first time I groomed her, it was like real. I just keep her on the table. Oh my god, she was just constantly looking for a way to jump down. So, but you know, at least now she kind of stays still. She moves around a little bit, but yeah, <laughs> it's not nothing compared to the first time. See, feel all these. There we go. So once I get all of this combed out, and I get the comb to go smoothly through her coat, and you can see like powdery stuff all on in there. Because when you release the dead hair, along with it comes all dead skin cells, all that cellular debris, all that dander that was stuck inside the skin comes out with it. All right, so. I'm gonna change combs now. Because this is a pretty wide tooth comb, so I'm gonna go through with a finer comb. There we go. And this is kind of what takes what takes so much time with the uh, with the grooming. You know, instead of just washing her, instead of just putting her in the tub and just start washing her. You know, expecting the water jet and the force dryer, the high velocity air dryer to just blow all of this out. Um, <clears throat> and this is just me personally, but I believe in working all of this out before, before the bath. Just like if I were to go home and take a shower, I would remove my dirty clothes and my dirty underwear before I take a shower. And that way, it, I'll actually clean my skin. And what's going on is basically, um, it's, it's fall now here in Georgia. And in most, you know, in most of the United States, it's getting colder. And we're, not, we're getting less sun. So whenever there's a change in the sunlight and how, how intense and how long the days are, then the dog's skin takes that, gets that signal from the change of the sunlight and they start to um, shed off. Well, they don't shed out, but these secondary hairs start to die off, right? They have a hair cycle, it's antigen, catagen, telogen. But anyways, um, the secondary hairs, the ones that surround the primary hairs, they start to die much, they, they, they have a shorter life cycle, so they, they start to die. They also get, they're really fine, so they get damaged more easily. So when that happens, they just sit there in the skin because unlike a short-coated dog, um, their secondary hairs that are now detached from the root, that are now kind of dead and dry and dull, they just sit there in the skin. And so you can feel it. You can literally feel it. And then when you brush those areas out, the skin actually feels smoother, right? And so 
by combing all of this out before the bath, now the skin, you've created room in those pores by removing all of this dead hair and the dander that comes out. You're creating space in those pores for the water and the shampoo and conditioner to actually get have a dog that smells nice for weeks after the bath, not just a few days. And their hair grows in nice. So when I first groomed her, she had a few rough spots, um, a couple of like hot spot areas and some areas where the skin was just a little rough. Um, but now, because I do a thorough combing every time I see her, I comb her entire body, you know, head to toe, nose to tail, and every square inch, I comb it all out. Because I do that, I'm giving the skin a good environment to breathe and just function and heal itself. So now whenever I groom her, yeah, it takes a little time to get her all combed out again. But once I do, you know, it's, it's all easy from there. The, she washes much easier, rinses off much cleaner and faster. She dries much faster. And all those skin issues that, you know, used to bother her, and make her feel uncomfortable and itchy, that's all gone now. Now she just has a beautiful coat everywhere, you know? So it's a, uh, the grooming plays a really big role in the health of the dog and how, how healthy their skin and coat is. And usually because it's all happening on a cellular level, because whenever we wash our dogs, you know, on a cellular level, their skin interprets it as an attack on the skin. But, you know, we don't really see the results of what we're what the, what we do, the groom what the groom actually did. We don't see the long term results because it happens months down the road sometimes because it's all happening so slowly on a cellular level. But the opposite is true as well. When we take our time and we actually clear the skin and we condition the coat properly, we condition the skin properly, get those oils back in the skin, then. Like months down the road, we start to see really good results. We start to see the skin clear up. They start to not smell anymore. Um, their, their hair looks beautiful and soft and silky. You know, just by taking the time to clear all of this out before we actually start washing and doing the haircut. Um, let's see. Terry says, it's all good, June. My rough collie broke a table once trying to go. What's up, Lee? She knows about the June magic. Oh, nice. Um, amateur June, can you do a daily stream so we can catch them? I have today off, so I'm lucky. Oh, okay. I mean, maybe. I, you know, the thing is, I, was, I wasn't going to stream today. I was like, nah, I'm not going to do this. But then, because, you know, I don't want to seem like, you know, I'm just <laughs> streaming too often, you know? Like, wear out my welcome or whatever. But this is actually pretty helpful information. And also she's behaving so well after like, you know, four visits. I wanted to show the progress and just show how helpful this can be. So, like, look at her, she has no skin issues anymore. And her coat feels so soft and silky, you know? Right here, you see this dark spot? That was an area where um, she, the skin was like, there was no hair there. But now it's grown back and it's a little bit different. It's like a different hair type. But yeah, now she doesn't have any skin issues and she has hair everywhere. The hair is nice and clean because every time I come, I, I actually clear out the skin. Um, Kim, I wish I had your patience. I'm gonna try harder just to take my time. Yeah, I mean, and this is, I guess, not, I, I know that a lot of grooming shops don't have the time to do this because it does take extra time, a lot of extra time, but and I'm lucky enough where I, I you know, my, my business model, um, you know, I just, I groom her today and that's it. Also because of where they, you know, the location I'm at. But anyways, um, it's just, it's just her for today. And that's the, way I, that's the way I have it structured. So I can take my time and actually do this. But for most grooming shops, you know, they have several dogs um, scheduled for that day. And so a lot of grooming shops, if they spent this amount of time on one dog, it would really set them behind for all the other dogs. And to do that on all the other dogs as well, you know, it's just, it's just not um, practical in a business setting. And I know that. And so this is more for pet owners who have poodles, long haired dogs. Um, this is to take the time and comb this out, comb all this out before you wash your dogs, or even before you take it to the groomers for their haircut. Because the groomers, 
they can do a really nice haircut for you. But a lot of times they don't have the time to actually comb everything out for you. You know, like this top knot here. There was a lot of dead hair that came out of here. And they like to keep her hair really big, you know? So, there we go. Just going through one more time. And then I'm gonna do her feet, her clean feet. Now her feet have always been a real struggle. She really doesn't like her feet being shaved. And I remember the first time it took me, I think, I think almost an hour to do all four feet just because of how much she, she fought and fought, you know, jumped around. And she hides her feet, tucks them under. It's like, it's like doing Tai Chi or like <laughs> Wing Chun, you know, those Kung Fu movies, you know, like wah, 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 wah. Anyways, it really is like, um, like doing Kung Fu practice with her um, whenever I try to shave, shave her feet. It has been better the last time. It was a little better. So maybe today will be, um, you know, not, so, not such a challenge. We'll see. Yeah, now I'm starting to get a lot of this. You can feel it. You can feel like powdery stuff coming out of their skin. And their skin, you can feel their skin smoothing out. It doesn't feel so bumpy, so grainy. So basically, today, this, all of this hair, all of this dead hair that we're combing out today, it's creating room. See all of this? It's creating room in her pores to grow new hair, right? So that when winter comes, um, the hair that's left now, that might comb out during the winter. It might, it might be time for those hairs to get combed out. And, you know, it combs out really easy because they're dead. They're just hanging out in the, in the skin. But anyways... The hair that we're removing today is creating space, is creating room for the follicles to grow new hair. And that way when winter comes, she'll have that new hair grown in, and that way she'll have a new fresh outfit to wear for winter. This is how our dogs stay clean and fresh and have, a, have nice new clothes to wear each season, right? Because, you know, we have the luxury of changing our clothes and going buying new outfits, but because they grow their clothes from their skin, you know, this is how they stay fresh and clean and have nice outfits to wear each season by removing old, the old outfit from last season, right? Removing it, that way the skin now has room to grow new hair for the new season. So when winter comes around, she'll have a nice new, you know, outfit to wear for winter. There we go. And then the hair, that's left today that's still alive and you know nice and silky you know these live hairs that are left today they're gonna be ready to be combed out in the winter but by that time the new coat will have come in to replace it so it's a cycle you know and we're just helping her along so that she stays nice and clean and fresh and has a nice fresh coat for each season. Okay. There we go. Maybe I'll continue streaming for her feet, shaping her feet, just so you guys can see <laughs> what a challenge that can be. starting to catch, especially down here. There we go. Good girl, Dolce. Good girl, thank you. Thank you, girl. <laughs> thank you, okay. Okay. All right. 
She's so affectionate. <laughs> she loves to lick me and just kiss me. She likes to lick my ears. <laughs> All right. Mm, thank you, Dolce. Make sure my nostrils are clean. Okay, thank you. There you go. Pick the boogers out for me. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dolce. This is called aloe grooming. That's the technical term for it, the scientific term. Aloe grooming. It means, you know, when, I, when I'm grooming her and she likes it and she appreciates it, she uh, feels the need to return the favor, so she starts grooming me. <laughs> mm, thank you. So we're grooming each other. That one went right in my mouth. Okay. So we're grooming each other, <laughs> like, like two monkeys on a tree. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, look at that. See that? Little bundles. Little bundles of dead hair. Let me see if I can. There we go. See that? So, and that's the thing. Um, our hair, we grow one hair per follicle, or, you know, sometimes two, um, but usually one hair per follicle for us, right? That's how our skin and hair work with dogs per follicle. So with dogs, um, it, it grows in bundles. It's like bundles of hair. And when the hair start to die, you know, it's like a bundle of dead hair. And that's what we're catching with the comb. You know, the bundles of dead hair inside that skin. As we comb it out, you'll see like all this powdery stuff, the skin danger that comes out with it. So that's really what's gonna get your dog nice and clean and smelling nice and feeling really soft and silky. It's not so much the shampoo, it's not the wash, it's not the, you know, the bath is important, of course, because, um, you know, the water helps heal and refresh and cleans, cleans out those pores. But without clearing the pore first, you know, by combing out a lot of that dead hair, then the water doesn't really have a chance. It doesn't really have, you know, uh, it doesn't have the room to get in those pores and do a really good clean. There we go. So this really is like removing our dirty clothes, our dirty underwear, before we take a shower so that our skin can get clean. See that? I can feel it was rough right here. See, it was like really rough. You can feel it because it literally has a rough texture to it. Oh. Um, Mimi, precious, precious. Wow, thank you. Pinkie Pie, what's up Pinkie Pie? Hey, what's up Amy, go groomer. Oh, what a cutie poodle, what a cute poodle I want. Oh, nice Karen, poodles are awesome. Um, my poodle is currently barking at his reflection in the fireplace. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, I love her. Oh my goodness. Um, shout out to that Mercedes. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> nice. That's my car. You know what I'm saying? I've come up. You know what I'm saying? I, once, once you get to my level, that's, what, that's the kind of stuff you drive. Right? You check the rims out, you know? Shoot. Don't envy me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love my Corolla. You know, I got Bluetooth. What more could you ask for? Okay. It reminds me of when I used to watch Caesar Milan, like the first season, he was driving like a Jeep, I think, right? Or, you know, he was driving like a, and you know, but it seemed like every season that uh, went by, like, you know, once he, once Caesar Milan got to like, the dog whisperer got out to like season seven, he was driving all these nice cars, you know? I was like, oh man, he made it, you know? Shoot. But yeah, I guess I made it, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm driving now. <laughs> Uh, LOL. Love it when those old school June jokes start. <laughs> yeah. All right. There we go. Oh, thank you, Dolce. Okay. 
So I am gonna, you know, give her a nice comb out, a thorough comb out when I dry her and before the haircut. So I think this is good enough, you know? You don't have to like bust out the undercoat rake and all of that. But as long as we can get this comb to go through the coat smoothly, right? Oh, look at that. Look at that, you can literally see the follicle right there. You can see like the, you see that? You see the follicle, like it, the root? Alrighty. It's like a little seed. Right. And you can see how, how fade that hair was, you know, how dull, colorless, lifeless, and how brittle it looked. So, and the cool thing is, you, you can see that it was still attached at the root. Um, tell, them about one of, tell them about the doggy magazine. <laughs> Karen, do you feel that pre-brushing speeds up the groom or takes more time? It takes more time. Yeah. So... That's why I'm saying this is not, you know, trying to tell groomers, other professional groomers, how they should be grooming or that they should be doing this. This is not an argument for how, you know, dog groomers should be grooming. Oh, you're good. It's more just showing the importance of, you know, proper skincare maintenance so that dog owners, you know, will hopefully see this and start combing a lot of this dead hair out of their dogs, especially during the transition times of the year when we're changing seasons because that's when you're going to see it most and it prevents tangles, mats, and all of that and then when if the dog owners, if pet owners would take the time to actually comb out their dogs like this then when you take your dog to the groomer your groomer is going to love you and your groomer is going to be able to do a nice haircut for you and not have to shave your dog down so and you're going to notice that your dog smells much better. Their skin will feel much smoother and their coat will feel silkier. So, you know, my hope is to, so that, you know, pet owners will start to see the benefits of combing their dogs more regularly. Comb them more than you wash them. If anything, I think the best thing would be to comb them regularly like this, comb your dog out and let the groomers wash them whenever they do a haircut. You know, if you take your dogs in for every six weeks or so, every four to six weeks, you know, let your dog groomer do the, do the um, washing and the haircut and you, you know, just comb them out maybe twice a week or so, you know, but my clients, you know, um, they, you know, I understand they're busy. They have really busy lives and they don't have time. And when they come home, they don't want to roll up their sleeves and go to work, you know? So for me, I feel like this is the, this is part of my service. You know, this is my niche. You know, I take the time and I've structured my business that way so that she's the only dog I'm grooming today. And so I can take my, my time before I actually wash her. But, okay, so now, because I'm gonna uh, shave her face, I'm gonna go ahead and use the undercoat right just on her face just to clear out the skin. Make sure the pores are nice and smooth and clear before I shave. And um, the reason why I shave before the bath, before I wash her, is because um, Kathy McGinnis, she's like a world famous poodle groomer. But when I took a class, one of her classes, she showed on her um, a special. So a special is a poodle that has won championships, you know, one, um, you know, they're the, the champions, but then they compete against other champions. And when they win that, they're considered specials. So she showed on her special that the reason why she does the shaving, she shaves the face and the feet, all the close shaving, the reason why she does it before the bath is because she's saying that um, just like when we get our neck and, you know, when we shave our skin, it itches afterwards. It kind of feels irritated. And so she was saying that the same thing for the dogs. In fact, dogs have more sensitive skin than we do. So she likes to do all her clothes shaving before the bath. And that way the bath will help with any itching or irritation that the shaving might have caused. There we go. And what I wanna do is make sure the skin is as clear as possible. That way those pores are not full and you know the skin's not all bumpy because it's just jam packed. So make sure it's clear as possible. That way it feels nice and smooth. When I shave everything, 
it's not gonna trap all that stuff in the skin. Hopefully it makes sense. All right. So to do the face, I use a 10 blade. All right, I'm using the Andes. Um, I don't even know if <laughs> it rubbed off. Andes two speed, I guess, because it's two speed. But it's not a fancy clipper, you know, it's just your run of the mill. Um, Karen, I'm going to offer a brush out package, an in between groom package. Yes, exactly. I, I, that's what I like to do too. Um, Amy, good advice. Thank you. Holly Thomas, you are awesome. When I feel frustrated as a groomer, I can watch your videos and feel so much better. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Holly Thompson says, um, you have such a fantastic attitude and approach. Wow, thank you. Okay. So, what we're going to do is I like to start right here with the ear. Alright, and then go back. Now a little tip about the mouth, right? See how here there's like some folds? So what you want to do is stretch the mouth out. I'll kind of stretch it a little bit. Right? There we go. So just kind of stretch that by pulling it back, pull the lip back. That way, by stretching that skin, by pulling the lip back, it kind of exposes the longer hairs that come out. Let me lift this camera a little bit so you can see. And then, there we go. There we go. And so here's how I like to determine it. So I started here at the ear, you know, where the ear is. And then you go forward, and it's uh, right under the eye, so it's where the eye line is, right? So the line goes from the ear to the corner of the eye, and then from here, you know, you want that muzzle, and then I go down from the ear, right? And just kind of outline the neck, almost like a U. See that? Almost like a U on the neck. Just it out nice and short. There we go. There we go. And then we'll blend that later. So that's how I do that. Any questions? Um, amateur. Oh god, the two-speed. I really hit those brakes. <laughs> it's like it's like using a Nokia flip phone these days, you know what I'm saying? Um Go Grimmer. Love to join in on your grooming, June, while I have a client on dog table at the same time. I love you. I love you too. Wow, thanks, Amy. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's when I watch your streams too. Whenever I can, whenever I have a chance. Um, I'm usually working on a dog and I turn on your uh, live stream. Okay. 
So the same thing on the other side. See, so now, just like Kathy McGinnis said, um, you know, about her poodles, now um, any kind of irritation from that short shave, you know, any kind of irritation that the clippers might give her skin, um, since I'm gonna go wash her after this, it'll help calm that down so she won't feel itchy. move around like that is because the clipper blades are hot so I test it here and it's not really hot so she's just moving around because she doesn't particularly enjoy it <laughs> there we go. There we go, so now we have a nice clean neck. And just wanna make sure both sides are even. There we go, so both sides are even. She has a nice little U there on her neck. And her face is nice and shaved now. She has a nice clean face. Oh, look at those eyes, oh my goodness. Oh. So anyways, now I'm going to do her feet, which, which is usually a challenge. Um, Holly Thompson, June, how do you approach streamlining your business so that you have a set limit of clients that you work with and enjoy working with? So it took a while. It took a few months. But um, now that I have like 35, well, I took a new client. So I have like 35 or 36 new clients uh, or clients. And I booked them out ahead of time. So that I'm booked out till January. So next month in November, November, December, I'm gonna start um, scheduling, filling up my fe January, February, March. So I try to um, book everybody out three months ahead of time. And I have the same clients that I see every month. Um, so I don't really have a need to take new clients and I know how much I'm gonna be, you know, I know about how much I'm gonna be get, taking in um, each week, each month. So I can kind of, you know, budget, you know, my, my spending and stuff like that according to how much is coming in. And it's a law of averages, you know. Um, you, I don't always have a great day uh, money-wise, but then uh, there's other days where I do like two or three dogs and, you know, it makes up for it. And I have some clients that tip me super, super well, super generously, and I don't, I don't expect it, you know, and I always calculate, I would always do my budgeting um, according to the price that I charge, not what they pay me. But, you know, <laughs> there are some clients who pay me a lot more than I charge, and so that, that kind of helps as well. And I put that extra money in savings and stuff like that. But yeah, you just, for me, I feel like you just do a really good job, a consistent job every single time you go and do that client. Um, just give them every reason to call you back and continue scheduling with you. 
Um, just do more than is reasonably be exp reasonably expected of you. Always go that extra mile, and then that client will introduce you to their friends, and then pretty soon you can't take any more clients, and you can take your time, you know, doing do grooming dogs the way you want. Um, think about it. the next the neckline should be two fingers above the breastbone. Uh huh. Interesting. Okay, because I usually just eye it, but the breastbone is here. So it should be two fingers above. So I should actually be going lower. Hmm. Okay. Um, a good way to measure if you tip the dog's head up. Um, if you tip the dog's head down to where the nose touches, that is where you have to shave up to. Okay. So if you tip the nose down. Okay. So like right about there is where you're supposed to shave down to. So that's the breastbone. So right, right there. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. Um, <laughs> okay, I guess I'll try it, you know. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because... Hmm. Let me try it. Well, actually, I'm just gonna... Because I don't know. Cause it would be like right there. I would have to shave down to there. But I actually like to just uh, scissor and just kind of blend that in and not go too low because when I look at it, I just feel like, you know, that's kind of low enough, right? And maybe it's just the way she's stretched. And also, I don't know, she has this big hair. So I don't know. Um, thanks so much for the answer. Oh, you're welcome, Holly. Thank you. It depends on the dog. She has a lot of neck, so where you do is good. Yeah, right. I feel like um, I feel like if I if I go down to the breastbone, it's just gonna it's just gonna make her neck look like she's she's a giraffe, you know? Cause look at that. It's all, she's got a lot of neck already. So I'm just gonna blend this like I usually do with scissors. Um, well, what you did was awesome. Thank you, bye. Go go, groomer says pattern placement can be adjusted if the dog is lacking some breed standard characteristics. Yeah, yeah. So I just I just feel like with her, um, if I go down to the breastbone, uh, it's just going to make her look like a giraffe or something. It's going to make her look like she just has too much neck, you know, if I go all the way down to here. So I'm just going to keep it where it is. Oh, I did go a little short, a little more, a little lower. So I just... Yeah, I just, I feel like that's, uh, you know, that's that's a pretty long neck, right? That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, for her, the way she looks, I just feel like it would kind of throw her look off. Um, but anyways, now I got to do her feet, and this is not going to be easy. Well, I got I to gotta tell myself the opposite. It's going to be fine. All right, let's see. All right. Let me change blades here. Get another 10 blade so it's you know nice and cool. So here we go, here goes nothing. Good girl. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So let's separate. Okay, this is actually really good. She usually fights a lot more. Awesome. You're okay, girl. That's all right. Man, it's, it's so it's so interesting how how limber they are, how flexible they are. Okay, so, um, I, I've been watching a lot of clean feet videos, so if anyone has any tips, they can chime in. But I hear it's good to separate the toes, right? Get your fingers in there and kind of spread the toes out and then do it that way. But she really doesn't like it. Let me see if I can get her to stop. You know, putting her head down there, getting in the way. So tie this up a little bit. 
four. Right. Sushi rice cake. I hear you're supposed to stop right there at the knuckle, right? At where, where it bends. Okay, if she would just <laughs> not be so nosy. Okay. So we got two of those knuckles, two of those feet so far, to those toes. Good girl, Dolce. This, believe it or not, this, this is really good. I mean, she's she's never really behaved this well for me before with her feet. I mean, there is a little bit of protesting. You know, there's a little bit of pulling away and everything, but nothing compared to what it used to be like. Thank you, girl. I'm trying to get in between her toes and get the toenails, you know, where the toenails are. But she's so good at just uh, maneuvering around and putting her head down, trying to block, trying to block me from being able to get to her toes by using her snout, you know, by using her nose. So I just uh, tightened the loop up a little bit so she can't put her head down there. But she still tries. So right there, right where the knuckles are, I want to stop. See that? Okay. 
But done. That was actually. <laughs> All right. One foot down here now. I want to see that. Oh, I still see some hairs. Okay. So we got that, but you can see it well on the camera. Hold that hair back, but that, so we got that foot all shaved down, nice and neat. See all the toes. So that's actually wow. She did really, good. <laughs> she did really good. Let me give her a treat. She did really good for that. Oh my goodness. There you go. Stopped by my friend's shop yesterday. Her and her business partner. They have a retail space in their salon. Stopped by and got this there. Anybody? Hey June, do you have any tattoos? Uh, no, I don't. No tattoos. I was thinking about getting one right here that says, I love mom. You know, just be a tough guy. You know what I'm saying? Just walk around with a tattoo that says, I love mommy. You know, but I'm not sure if that would intimidate too much. You know, I don't want to be too, in <laughs> I don't want to be too intimidating, you know, when I walk around. So I decided not to, you know, I was like, ah, that's just too tough. It's just too tough. You know, I'm already looking I already look very intimidating. I'm sure when people see me, they're like, oh my God, that's a tough guy. And to have a tattoo that says, I love mommy with the heart on it, you know what I'm saying? I think it just, it would scare too many people, you know? <laughs> okay, so. Wow, she's behaving so well. Oh my goodness. Still a fight and everything. First time I did it, it took me like about an hour, maybe a little more than an hour to do all four feet because I was using like pressure release techniques, like training techniques to get her to stop fighting and stop trying to jump off the table.
Okay. She was flying off the table for a second there. I'm trying to separate the toes here like that, separate the toes, and then go in between with my clippers. That way you get the hair around the nail bed really nice and short as well. Good girl, Dolce. Good girl. Okay. I'll just let her relax for a second because she's like moving it all around. It's really hard to clip um, safely when they're like pulling and moving their foot around like that. So. Yeah, get, get out of my way. <laughs> okay, so I just try to get the little little pieces of hair that are sticking out right here, get it nice and smooth. Good job, Dolce. Go. All right, so that one's done. I'm gonna go ahead and change blades now because this one's getting a little bit warm. All right, so go back to the other 10 blade, and then I'm gonna oil it as well. Uh, let's see. Hey, June. What's up, Angela? How are you? Um, are you using that ceramic edge? My favorite. No, I'm just using the Oster 10. They both have the, the steel edge. Right. Let's get it oiled up a little bit. All right. Let the excess oil off. Take another sip of coffee. But yeah, 
Isn't that awesome? Like, wow, look at that. Nice. And then this one as well. Nice, right? And it's like, wow, she didn't really. Hey, what's up, Kevin? All right. Good girl, Dolce. Sometimes I hear here on the nail bed. Oh shoot, can't even see really. But anyways, I guess you get the idea, right? I mean, just to string the rest of this, it kind of be boring because she's not really fighting. You know, I mean. So, anyways, <laughs> that's basically what I'm doing. She's not really fighting that much. She's just pulling and you know moving her foot around a little bit, but she's doing really good. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, oh wow, Angela. You know Angela. Amy knows everybody. Anyways. Um, yeah, thanks for joining me. That's basically what we're doing. Um, I'm just going to do the other two feet, um, do the sanitary area, of course, and that's it.